ratios called sine, cos and tan last lesson. Today we're going to use them to find the missing lengths in a right angle triangle. So these are the steps you have to follow every time you have a question where you have a missing length. So the first thing is label the triangle, then choose the appropriate ratio. Do you remember Sokoto from last lesson? Yes or no? Yes. All right, you think so? We'll go through it in a minute and then substitute the values. What that means is I'll do it in this question. But my first question to you is, why am I not using Pythagoras? Why do we have to do this weird stuff? It's a right angle triangle and I have to find a missing length. How is this different to the Pythagoras questions that we did early in the year? Yes? There's some degree. Yep, so there's an angle given and? Because you only have one Exactly. How many sides are given to us? One. one. For Pythagoras, we need two sides given and we can find the third one. Here we've been given one angle and one length and we can find the other angle and the other length. Does that make sense? So that is how these questions are different from the Pythagoras questions because a lot of times students are confused. When do we know, you know, how do we know when do we use Pythagoras and when do we use trig? Pythagoras only involves a right angle triangle, two lengths will be given, third you can figure out. In trick, all you need is one angle and one length and you can figure everything else out. Make sense? Alright, first question. Label the triangle. The first side that we label is the hypotenuse. Is this the 90 degree angle? Yes. yes. So is this hypotenuse? Yes. yes. We'll label it as H. The angle given to us is 64. Isn't this the side opposite to the angle? Yes. And isn't this the side touching the angle? Yes. yes. Happy with that? Now, once we've done that, we choose an appropriate ratio. Now, this side is given to us, so it's useful. And this side is unknown, so this is useful. We haven't been given the opposite side and we haven't been asked to find it. So which two sides are here? A and H. So you need to match it up with the ratios here. Which ratio, sine, cos or tan, has A and H in it? Cos. And that's what it means, choose the appropriate ratio. See, we have nothing to do with O. It's not unknown. They haven't asked us to find it and they haven't given us. Does that make sense? Yes. So A is unknown and they've asked us to find it and hypotenuse is given. So is cos the appropriate ratio? Yeah. Now, you need to write this. Once you've decided on your ratio, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Simple so far? We've labeled the triangle, we've decided which ratio to use. Now all we have to do is sub in the numbers. So, cos of, what angle is it? Degrees. Equals, what's adjacent? What's hypotenuse? Now, we need to solve for x. 35 has been divided. Can I multiply both sides by 35? Yes or no? Yes. So basically, what will x be equal to? 35 times cos of 64 degrees. In your calculators now, tell me the answer please. Up to two decimal places. So we got 15.343 and I'm going to approximate it to... Alright, Casio. something missing in this question. The answer. Um, what we need? The units. Is it length that we've calculated? What's the length that has been given to us? Okay. Perfect. Next one. Again. What's the first step? We label the triangle. This is the 90 degree angle. So this must be? H. H. This is the side opposite, so this must be O, and this is adjacent. Happy with that? Yes. Now, do we need adjacent at all? No. No. So which two sides? O and H. Choose the ratio. So, which is? Sine. So sine theta equals O. Don't you call it sin? It's a sin. It's a sin to call it sin. True. It's a sin. Alright, get over it. Sine theta equals O over H. Let's put in the numbers. What's theta? 49. What's opposite? Gosh. What's hypotenuse? Well, so what will x be equal to? So we times what's 
sides go 12, and that's what we get. In you guys now, 12 times, sign 49. Nine point oh five six five one something something something. Now, rounding. Sorry. If your calculator is in degree mode, you don't have to then specify degrees again. All you have to do is twelve times sine forty five. Now, cast down. We need to round it to two decimal places. So we look at the third decimal place. It's six, so this rounds out. Now, unit. Why have I used this weird uh, equal sign? No one asked, asked that. Yes? Is a roundabout? What does a roundabout mean? It's, it's rounded up. It's rounded. One person speaks at a time? What is close to? It's approximately equal to. Yeah. Okay? So I don't like saying things 9.05651 is not equal to 9.06, but it's approximation. So whenever I round, I always put these um, wiggly equal signs. Make sense? Last question. Labeling. This side is? H. Opposite to the 90 degree angle this is? H. This is opposite to the angle? So we don't need H. O and A. Choose the ratio. Toa. So 10 theta equals over A. Make sure the steps that I'm writing, you write them as well. Pens down. As we board. There's plenty of time to copy. So 10, what's the angle? What's opposite? What's adjacent? So what will x be equal to? 16 times 10 of 21. In your class now. Now, 6.14182, we need to round it to two decimal places. So we look at the third place, it's 1, so this stays at 6 as 6.14. And the unit? Any questions? What's that? So we have done using trick to find the missing lengths. However, we've only done questions where the unknown was in the numerator. So next lesson, we'll deal with questions where unknown is in the denominator. So that'll be part two. Any questions regarding this? What are the three steps? Label, choose the ratio, substitute. Label, choose the ratio, substitute it. And what should be written on every page for your trick homework?